you and then how did you overcome it? Did you want to get that? No. Okay, I'll say it. Uh, what is an assumption that people have made of you and how did you overcome it? Okay, I'm not all four of those people. I'm one of the upper, upper left. The other three are my siblings. And we're all basically the same age. My sister's a twin. One brother's a year older and the other one's two years older. They're smiling. <laughs> okay, um, people make... Sorry, I'm a very nervous public speaker, so I'll take off my mask. I'm an English teacher who knows everything about public speaking and say, I'm choking on my own speaking. Okay. People make assumptions about others because they don't know about them. So they guess based on superficial traits because it gives them something to file away, some way to stick you in a pigeonhole somewhere. The superficialities that they latch onto change with the person and the situation and sometimes the times. In the 70s, people assumed because I was a tall woman with short hair who preferred wearing jeans to wearing dresses that I was a rebel. I wasn't. Yet. In the 90s, I had students who assumed because I was a tall woman with short hair who preferred wearing jeans to dresses that I was a lesbian. It really didn't matter to their lives whether I was or was not a rebel or a lesbian, but they wanted to have a way to put me in a proper file, a way to anticipate my, what I might think, what I might do that might affect their lives. How I dealt with those assumptions was varied. Usually I waited until they were comfortable enough with me to ask me questions. Because when the questions happen, the answers are the accurate information that allows people to file you away. Um, by the time in the 70s, someone would ask me if I went by Miss or Ms, which was a real big deal then. I knew if I answered Miss, they would see me as a traditionalist, and if I said Ms, they would see me as a rebel. By the 80s, they shifted it to, did I smoke pot? Like that would define me as a rebel. <laughs> And then, um, no, sorry, I've, I've lost my place. Pa will do that to you. and told 
told him it's time. Since I was a teenager, I always hoped that I would adopt children. He knew this about me even before we married. So we began our adoption journey, which required a lot of paperwork and 13 months of waiting. After we were matched with Samuel, I remember looking at the initial pictures of him a hundred times a day, longing to see him in person, wanting to have him in my arms. When reading became difficult, we happened to get a seven second video of him and my husband and I watched that video over and over again, doting on him. In February of last year, we made our first trip to Korea and met him in person. Samuel must have recognized us from our photos. He jumped right into my husband's arms and um, needless to say, it was really difficult to come back home without him. Eventually, the paperwork were completed in April of last year and we became a family on April 9th. Brian. 